Honorable Minister of Law, Honorable Judges of the Supreme Court at the High Court, dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. Very good morning, members of the legal fraternity. Very good morning to all of you. Now the central government is considering the proposal to open up the legal services to foreign law firms participation in a limited way. In this context, it is necessary that the lawyers should equip themselves to compete with their peers and also compete with their foreign counterparts to the extent necessary. To enable the lawyers to improve the skills of advocacy and updating their knowledge in various emerging areas, Bar Council of India has taken the initiative in organizing these continuing education programs in various states. In fact, I had the opportunity of participating in one such program organized by the Bar Council of India in Ranchi, state of Jharkhand, and Mr. Nilesh Kumar is also here on the topic of practical aspects of practice of advocacy, that is regarding this client communication and how to prepare the pleadings, everything on, on the, all the practical aspects. There was a very huge response from the lawyers and I am told that the deliberation, Mr. Nilesh Kumar and others informed me, Manan Kumar Mishra and others informed me that the deliberations and the interactive sessions were very useful for the lawyers. The Bar Council of India has also distributed the books like CPC, IPC, CRPC and Constitution of India to the lawyers. For enhancing the professional competence of the lawyers, continuing educational programs are to be organized in the districts and taluks on the required relevant topics. For this, a strong linkage between the Bar Council of India and the State Bar Council and various district and taluk bar associations is required to organize such programs on relevant topics. State Bar Councils are to organize such continuing legal education programs involving district and taluk bar associations and the senior advocates. Even though the Tamil Nadu Bar Council is already doing it, I request the Bar Council of the State Bar Council to enhance the number of, increase the number of programs to be organized even at the taluk levels. In my view, that Honorable Minister is also there. In my view, the Ministry of Law and Justice and also the Law Department of the State Government should extend monetary support to the Bar Council of India and also to the State Bar Councils for such continuing education of the lawyers. I do not know how they organize the program, how they have met the financial in expenses for this organizing the program in ITC, Please, I request the law minister, don't think that they are very rich. I do not know them. Perhaps, perhaps to wanted to show up that we are not poor or perhaps to show up, perhaps they organized this program in the big hotel. I am told that they are uh, totally lacking funds to organize these programs and they are finding it difficult. So I, ex I request the law minister to consider the extending the uh, monetary, uh, monetary support for, for organizing such a legal education programs. <laughs> I would also like to say that many young lawyers are the first generation lawyers who are not in a position to withstand the initial chilling period in the profession as pointed out by our Honorable Chief, Chief Justice. In this regard also, I would like to request the Ministry of Law and Justice and also the state government, you should select some young lawyers who are actually socially and economically backward and also meritorious advocates and extend monetary support to those lawyers at least for a couple of years, give them at least some two or three years so as to help them to withstand in the profession. Not to, it is the, the responsibility not only lies with the ministries, the responsibility also lies with the senior advocates. I see many senior advocates are here. I request the senior advocates, all of you have great responsibilities towards the posterity because young, every young lawyer does not have a background of legacy of a family of advocates. I would like to write, request the senior advocates to adopt or engage at least a few young advocates for a period of about, about two to three years and help them in developing their skills, though you may or may not pay them monetarily, but please help them in developing their skills of advocacy, professional competence, client communication, capacity building. I would also like to suggest that the senior advocates who are 
who are getting more briefs and getting financially sound, they can also adopt some bar associations in the Mafisal and Taluk bar associations by equipping them with the libraries, computers and other infrastructures. This is my suggestion. Because I also hail from a Taluk bar association, so therefore I humbly request the senior advocates to look into that. In this regard, I also request the bar council, state bar council, to approach some senior advocates to extend support to provide all infrastructure and others to the Mafisal bar associations also. I do not want to say much on this public interest, public interest litigation because technical sessions are, to, are, are likely to, are to follow now. But I would li like to only say that public interest litigation has been in existence for more than four decades as a glorious record. The Supreme Court and the High Courts passed orders in, large pub in larger public interest in consonance with the spirit of the Constitution and the constitutional mandate. It is befitting that the Bar Council of India has uh, chosen this uh, topic of uh, public interest litigation and access to justice. All I would like to say is, like every time I say, only one citation, I want all of you after this to go through it. It covers all the public interest law litigation, 2010-3 SCC 402. Right from the date of commencement till this date, it gives 2010-3 SCC 402. Even if I am to say, it is covered in that judgment. So I like to, all of you to go through it after this uh, program is over in a leisurely manner. Before I conclude, I see many young lawyers uh, no seats standing also. I would like to say that uh, don't uh, just uh, just uh, carry only the image of or the impression of uh, ITC hotel. I would like to say that all of you carry the, the encouragement that you need to have from this program. You see many larger dignity, number of dignitaries sitting on the dice. After I went to the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court for the last one year, what I have noticed there was some difference I noticed. What is the difference? I saw the levels of professional competence and the standards which I noticed in the Supreme Court as very, very, very higher. I would like to impress upon all of you that you should level, increase the level of your professional competence and standards, stand on par with the national professional legal competence. This is particularly from the young lawyers of the Tamil Nadu, I am saying. I, before I conclude, I would like to leave a quarrel for you. I repeat, Therefore, from today, from this hotel, carry the message of Ulluva Dellam Vyarvulla. Thank you, all of you. Very good evening to all of you. Last speaker, probably, I hope that probably you are all waiting to go back home on Saturday till 5 o'clock. After the ordeal of uh, Monday to Friday is over, Prabhakar and others has made us uh, sit here from morning 10 o'clock, 9.30 to 5.30. Probably you are all thinking when it will be over. Very good evening to all of you. After listening to Justice Gowda, it, is, it becomes too difficult to just get yourself restored and then uh, back to your own, uh, own speech and own uh, position. And uh, just I asked uh, uh, Prabhakar that all the chief judge of the Supreme Court judges have gone, why you have made me and Justice uh, Sanjay Kishan Kal and Agnihotri lordships alone to sit here? You could have just handled the function by yourself. He is simply saying, this is your own function. You should, all three of you should wait till the end and conclude us. If you go, where you will go? That is what he is saying. Because all, all three, of you, three of you, this is your own function. Therefore, he made us all three of us to wait till the end. Therefore, we three of us are waiting till the end. That's the reason that I am also staying back till the end. And he's saying for me in Tamil, Amma, you don't go to function, you go to the function, you go to the function. So, I am obliged to Mr. Prabhaka. From morning, you have been listening to speakers after speakers. How you would have, by this time you would have just understood that how the traditional litigation has given way to this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, communal litigation or you can say the democratization of the process of litigation. That is what speaker after, after speaker was uh, saying. The scope of litigation or the locus standee has been liberally expanded so as to give access to justice to all the poor, disadvantaged and the deprived people. In other words, you can say that the public interest litigation has offered ladder to justice, 
to disadvantaged sections of the society. I would just like to point out only two instances how the, how the, the people who cannot have access at all to the justice, how they got access by taking pseudo cognizance of two matters, only two matters I will just, in a very briefly I will point out. While I was sitting in Madurai, there was one matter, that is, there were two villages nearby, which is a distance of about six kilometers. In one village, this noon meal is prepared. In another village, there is no noon meal is prepared. This another village where no noon meal is prepared, there are children up to plus one to fifth standard. The place where the noon meal is prepared, it is the middle class that is up to from one to eight. So what they have done was, they have asked all these kids from that one particular A village where there is no noon meal is prepared. They will have to start from there, walk that four kilometers to go to that other village to take the noon meal. This was the news reported. So this was going on day after day, months after um, months, about some one or two years ago. This was reported in the newspaper how these small kids, they are forced to walk every day four kilometers to go and take the meal, again walk four kilometers back to the further second session. This was reported in the newspaper. This came to my notice and then we took the pseudo-motor uh, public interest litigation. Then all the public officials, you know, the moment it is seized by the High Court, all of them came rushing in. The very moment we issued the notice, we asked the government leader to take notice. The very next day, they got, within two days, they came and reported that they made arranged auto. In the auto, the cooked meal is brought to this particular A village where there is no noon meal is prepared. See the, how these kids who will not have any access to justice by taking the Siomoto cognizance of the matter by as a public interest litigation, how the court was able to render justice to those people, to those small kids. And the next instance that I wanted to point out is, uh, for a very brief while I was, for about eight or nine months, I was the Chief Justice of Ranchi High Court. There one news was reported, you know, Ranchi is uh, very rich in mineral, but the riches of the mineral has not reached the poor sections of the society. There, you know, the schools, particularly primary schools and the middle schools and all these girls' schools, they do not have adequate infrastructure like in our state of Tamil Nadu. There was a news reported where how these uh, girls who have attained who have attained puberty and during the period of menstruation, they don't have the basic facility of toilet and how there are a lot of percentage of many, uh, increased percentage of uh, this uh, discontinuance of the continuation of the education because during the menstruation, they don't have toilet in the schools. Therefore, there were many school dropouts. This was reported in the newspaper. Then we took pseudo-motor cognizance of the matter. Then we issued notice. I was there for about eight or nine months. In the meanwhile, we issued a direction. What they have done was, wherever the toilets were under repair, they have immediately repaired, they have provided uh, this uh, running water to those toilets, and wherever there were no toilets, they started constructing, and later it was informed to me by my successor, that this construction of toilets, almost in all the girls' schools were complete. These two simple instances, simple instances I am pointing out, pointing out that how this uh, public interest litigation can provide access to justice to any people in any corner of the corner of uh, the country. This two in very simple instances. I can point out any number of instances because we are at the fake end. I am not pointing out other instances. That this public interest litigation has brought sucker to the poorer sections, poorer sections of the society. As pointed out by the earlier speakers, this is uh, Public interest litigations are aimed only for, for espousing the social causes of the poorer and the disadvantaged sections. Unfortunately, in recent years we have noticed that this important jurisdiction of public interest litigation is, is largely misused. I just, I, wanted to, I just wanted to point out one or two instances in Ranchi only. In Ranchi, we used to have this public interest litigation on a particular dates, say on Thursdays. After I went there, I changed the days as Thursdays. There was one or two lawyers, particularly one lawyer. Like in the motor accident cases, you see some lawyers are specialized. Like this, this particular lawyer is specialized only in PAL. PAL, nothing but PAL. He will come only for PAL matters, and I am told that he has learned several crores of rupees. Nilesh Kumar is there. He will know who the lawyer is. I am not mentioning the name. 
on the fr- thursday he does not have any other work on thursdays he used to sit in the front row along with his all his junior colleagues all matters being called cases after cases only this lawyer what this particular lawyer has done many of the pal pals are not for genuine causes they are with oblique motives say for example one industry is being set up this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, competitor is does not want that industry to come then some kind of pal he put one pal saying that one sawmill is coming up it is creating lot of noise it is a residential area later it was when the when the government officials have uh, when the government officials have filed their counter we came to know we came to know that it is at the biggest of the competitor who is situated nearby that he has put that pal like that all the time he has been filing this pals with so many oblique motives not only for small matters against the politicians chief minister so many so many pals were filed of course in several matters we imposed cost also why i am pointing out this this benevolent provision of public interest litigation is many a time misused by the lawyers i wish that none of you should become such kind of a lawyer who are sitting on the front row on thursdays i am sure that you will come out with the cases where i note i pointed out in the first two instances and not in the later instances i wish and hope that you will carry the correct message from today i also wish to point out that this public interest litigations are not maintainable in service matters private matters admission to colleges and then um, that is early hearing of matters in the courts and so many other areas this pals are not maintainable only for espousing the social and economic justice and with a view to render the give the cost effective manner this public interest litigations you will have to carry to summarize from the morning what i have noticed was that is everybody was insisting upon that is this social and economic justice must be accessible to all for that the lawyers will, will have to play a role of social engineering bringing out or espousing the cause of all the poor and the disadvantaged disadvantaged sections of the people and for which as i pointed out and some other speakers also pointed out continuation continuing legal education for the lawyers is very much necessary and you must also realize your responsibility and you must enhance your standards and whatever be the position wherever you are practicing whether in the high court or in the district court or in the magistrate court you can always ensure that the justice justice delivery is accessible to the common man at the least cost and the cost effective manner before i wish i wish to conclude not like justice gobal gowda on the social economic aspects on your personal personal angle i am saying the profession of law is not an ordinary one you are fighting for the rights of the others which is a very 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 noble profession it is a divine calling i repeat it is a divine calling given by you by god do hard work do hard work put in the best bring out the best best possible from you only then you can succeed only then you can compete with your uh, with your peer groups and with your colleagues you are sure to succeed one day i leave this message he can who thinks he can he can who thinks he can i wish that all of you will carry the message that i am able to do i will do it because i think that i i can do it so i wish you all success wish you all success once again thank you